Back in 1942, the Grand Coulee showed how dams could deal with the abrasive power of flood water. But to build a dam across the mighty Yenisei River in Russia, engineers had to find a way to stop the water while keeping the ships moving. In the 1960s, the Soviet Union wanted to upscale its industrial power. So they planned a series of gigantic dams. One of the first, the Kruznoyarsk Dam, would stretch a whole kilometer across the river Yenisei and generate 6,000 megawatts of power. But this river was also the main shipping route into Siberia and would get blocked by the dam. To keep the ships moving, engineers hatched an ingenious plan. They decided to build a steel trough big enough to carry a ship. Then they planned to push trough and ship up to the top of the dam. Here they would spin the whole contraption round and lower it back down to the river on the other side. To move the 7,000 ton load, they would use hydraulic pumps. Engineer Ed McCann employs a hot water bottle to demonstrate the principle behind hydraulic power. Right. Connected to my hot water bottle is a, is a pipe which goes into this bit of garden hose and it's connected up to this little water tank here. So let's see what happens. I'm going to lift it up by about, here we are, by about a metre. So I've lifted it up a metre. Now the pressure in this system has gone up, but it's not gone up enough to lift this yet. So there's no movement. The hot water bottle is still squashed flat. Now I'm going to stand back here because I don't want a load of blocks on my head. And so I'm lifting up, it's about three metres now and you can see the concrete blocks moving very quickly now. I'm going to take it up right to the top which is about four metres and there they go. What you can see there is the amazing power and force you can get out of water under pressure. And that's what we use to lift big, heavy stuff. The Russian engineers used liquid under pressure to lift their ship. In the walls of the chamber were powerful pumps, which squeezed hydraulic fluid under immense pressure into a set of motors mounted below. These drove huge steel cogs that propelled the trough along a guide rail. The motors generated so much traction that they lifted the chamber from river to reservoir in only 90 minutes. When the ship lift opened, the citizens of Kruznayarsk turned out in droves. This mechanical marvel was the crowning glory of the biggest dam in the world. At China's Three Gorges Dam, the engineers also face a major traffic problem. Their dam sits on one of the busiest rivers in Asia. The Yangtze is a really important waterway for navigation traffic in China, leading all the way from Shanghai the coast up to Yicheng, all the way to Chongqing. It's been carrying about 18 million tons of freight per year. Getting about 170 ships a day over a dam that's more than 100 meters high is a tall order for the engineers. Befitting the biggest dam on Earth, the Chinese solve it by building the biggest ship lock on Earth. Ships enter the lock at the bottom of the dam. The gates close, water floods in and lifts the ships up to the next lock. 
Ships must go through five tiers of locks to get to the top, which can take up to four hours. This is fine for cargo ships, but for the many passenger boats operating on the Yangtze, it's just too slow. To provide a more efficient transit opportunity for passenger traffic, they've built this ship lift system here, which will allow boats to go through in about 36 minutes. Unlike the ship lift at Kruznoyarsk, the one at the Three Gorges will lift ships straight up like an elevator. And the secret of its success will lie hidden in its concrete walls. The engineers will fit a series of massive counterweights that will do most of the lifting. Sixteen 1,000 ton concrete blocks will be connected by cables to the steel trough that will carry the ship and the water it floats in. As the counterweights drop, they will hoist the trough upwards and lift the ship to the top. This ship lift here is 113 meters high and can handle vessels up to 3,000 tons. It'll make it the largest in the world and twice the size as the one at Krasnyansk. Certainly when you look at the structure now, it's got a ways to go in terms of construction. It won't be finished till 2015, but it's, it's clearly huge. It's a, another very impressive achievement underway here. <laughs> 